Welcome to a Spectral Quest. I'm your host, Harris Lamonti. So as far back as I can remember, I have always had an odd fascination about death and a need to know what happens when we die. I knew there was more to the story and I was affected by that knowledge. I can remember having strange, unexplained experiences that I now am able to identify as paranormal. This is a program where we will be exploring whether or not we as the living can feel, see, hear, or even communicate with the souls that have passed. You may or may not believe in ghosts. I'm not here to sway you in one direction or another. What I will do is provide you with as much information as possible and let you decide for yourself. Do we or don't we move onto a different plane? If we do, why have there always been accounts of souls and spirits that seem to still be around us? Do not all of us cross over? If that's the case, then why? I grew up going to church and believing that there was someone watching over me, judging all my actions, good and bad. Since I was little, I always remember having questions. What happens when we die? Where do we go? Are there spirits? Why do we fear them? Do demons and angels really exist? Is there a devil? Is there a God? Does God exist? Does God exist? Does Satan exist? Does Satan exist? These specific questions have helped to shape this investigation. Let's begin with what does paranormal mean? Paranormal refers to events that cannot be scientifically explained. An example, seeing ghosts, hearing or seeing spirits, telekinesis, you get the idea. Wanting to have these and more questions answered, I packed my gear and set out to do some research and small experiments. I began at the local cemeteries. I brought along a voice recorder to see if I could capture any EVPs and took along my camera for possible photographic evidence. Let's listen to a chilling tale. Liz from Enya, California has a story from when she was a child. Story that is always with her. My name is Elizabeth and my story begins when I was about four years old and my family had moved to the town of Martinez, California. At that age, I always realized that I had a keen sense for hearing and seeing things that weren't necessarily normal. I would always see shadows or hear strange noises, but I would always get the reassurance from my parents that it's just the wind. But my most vivid memory of this particular house that we moved to was when I was about six years old and I was left home alone with my sister for a few hours. I remember I picked up a bunch of my brother's toy soldiers and I brought them to the hallway 
and I had propped the door open so I could get some sunlight. While I was playing with the toys, I remember something caught my attention. It was a quick shadow that came across the carpet. So naturally I looked up and when I did, right about 10 feet from me at the front porch was a figure of an old man. So the first day when we started shooting this episode, we came to this cemetery. It was about 6.30. So sunset was gonna be around 7.15. So we didn't have enough time to do our normal ritual we do when we go to cemeteries to let the dead know that we're here in peace and no harm is intended. So we set up all the equipment, cameras, lights, and we were able to finish all the scenes. So as we pack all the equipment and we were re ready to live, as we were walking out of the cemetery, this is what happened. This is where my drone got uh, Good and bad. When we were editing an EVP video where we capture a clear voice that everyone heard, we detected a second voice, seeming to respond to a comment I made about an earlier incident we had with the drone. This is where my drone got uh, This is where my drone I'm Chelsea Denae. I'm psychic medium empath. When I was a child, I would always feel different. I would always feel out of place compared to the other children. When I would go to my friends' houses, there's often times where I would be scared as a child because I didn't understand exactly what I was seeing. And when I would ask my friends, you know, describe what I was seeing, um, they would not have any idea what I was talking about. And growing up was really hard. I felt like I had no one to turn to, no friends that I could talk to or relate to. When I was around three years old is when I started telling my family that I sensed my mom's death. And as time went on, I would continue to talk about my mom dying, getting sick. Um, and everybody would assure me that, no, she's fine, she's not gonna get sick. Well, when I was about 11 years old, my mom was diagnosed with cancer and she was very sick. She got diagnosed with cancer and at that time, she, I don't know, she was only alive for not even a year after being diagnosed. Then she passed away when I was 12 years old. At the beginning of the 21st century, a subject matter became very popular in the mainstream. 
the paranormal shows quickly produced and broadcast. Most were on the shabby side, while others were staged beyond belief, literally. And some focused on doing investigations that showed only the dark side of the paranormal, subjecting the audience to fear instead of real information. Let's face it, fear sells. It is human nature to fear the unknown. Many are afraid or bothered with the idea of paranormal activity simply because they don't understand it. These various shows certainly didn't help that mindset. He was dressed in old military attire that the type that you see in documentaries, I mean, from the Civil War era. It was old and dirty. He had this long beard, and he had a hat that I would assume was from, like, a general, because I could see that it had a lot of patches on it. And at first, he wasn't looking directly at me. He was just gazing out. So at that point, I, I starting to feel like I was going to freeze up, and then that's when he turned to look at me. Right when our eyes met, that's when I completely froze. I remember feeling chills down my spine, and I couldn't even scream for my sister. And then what else I noticed was that the way he was sitting, he had one knee bent up and one leg straight. One of the legs had looked like bloody, like a bloody bandage. So as if he had been injured, but again, it looked really old and tattered. And what struck me as well as I kept looking at him is I noticed that he wasn't a full figure. He was translucent and I could see right through him. I mean, my heart dropped to my stomach. And at that point, I knew I had to call for my sister. I then noticed that the man was starting to get up and that's when I leaped towards the front door to lock it. But as I started screaming, I heard my sister come running, saying, what's the matter? The only thing that I was able to blurt out was I said, hay un viejo, which translates to there's a man. She didn't question me. And so we both leaned up against the door. And I mean, at that point I was in tears. I could just imagine the man floating through the door to get us because I knew it was a ghost. I knew that a door between us wouldn't stop him. But we were able to lock the door, and I recall me and my sister screaming, running towards my parents' bedroom down the hall. And we both hid under the covers until my parents came home, which was probably hours later. To this day, we haven't really told our parents what happened, but I do remember asking my sister why she never told anyone. She said that there was no need to because she knew exactly who I was talking about. There is a very well-known haunted house here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Just south of San Francisco and San Jose, there is the Winchester Mystery House, recently featured in a Hollywood production. Rich used to work for that museum and he has several stories to tell. So in early 1991, I started working at the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Uh, it was my first job and I was a tour guide and I later was promoted to a tour supervisor. And the Winchester house um, was built by Sarah Winchester. Uh, she was um, a very wealthy heiress to the Winchester rifle, which was the gun that won the West, the most deadly firearm produced in the 19th century. And she was told back in New Haven, Connecticut by a psychic that she was being haunted by the spirits of those who were killed by the rifle. And the only way that she could assuage the spirits was to basically build them a house. So that's what she did. She moved to San Jose, um, which back then was a small farming community. She began building and building and building. And by the time she died in 1922, it was a 160-room Victorian pile. It was enormous. It still stands to this day. 